Hey guys, what's going on? Tyrocco here, and I hope you're all doing great. So today, I want to do a follow-up video to the video I did a few days ago, which was about Cybelle using her unbook because she does require quite a bit of books, but I've booked her fully with CVC happening, and I did a lot of testing with her. I tested her in the arena. I did so much testing. Like I used several hundred gems doing this, and Diddy actually has tacked my defense, um, so thank you again to him, and he recorded it on Discord, or I recorded it, but then I deleted the content by accident on my recording, so it's unfortunate, but I do still have one video I will show you guys, and I got some pretty good information from that. With that said, I do have timestamps to this video down below, so if you guys want to skip, jump any part of this video which is most value, most valuable to you, feel free to do that. With that said, I want to say thank you to Loot Cakes for sponsoring this video. Listen to this next little segment and find out how you can enter to win a $25 gift card and learn how Loot Cakes can be a benefit to you. Big thank you to today's sponsor, Loot Cakes. This is actually something I'm super excited to share with you guys, and you're definitely going to want to listen to this because Loot Cakes literally costs nothing to sign up for. It's super easy, and if you're a U.S. resident plus have a Gmail account, which are the requirements to actually sign up, then you're going to be entered into a $25 gift card giveaway without having to do anything other than sign up with a link that I provide down below. It's going to be the top pinned comment as well as the description of this video. So what is Loot Cakes exactly? Um, well, first off, you're basically getting rewarded for making purchases in free-to-play games that like Raid Shadow Legends, um, AFK Arena, all these other ones at the bottom I've made purchases in, but they have so many different games that they scan through your Gmail account and find games you've made purchases for, with before, whether it's in the iOS store, whether it's in the Android store, and they even do Steam purchases so you can get so you can get loot cakes from the money you've spent. Now, you may be thinking, well, I don't spend very much money in the game, so I don't know how this is going to benefit me. Well, don't worry. If you're a free to play player now, you're not going to gain loot cakes as quickly if you're free to play, of course, but I have created an alliance. And if you join this alliance, whenever I make a purchase or any other whale in the alliance makes a purchase, which it's currently at only me, only one member. Um, but anytime anybody else makes a purchase, the alliance is going to get a 25% bonus, which is going to be awesome. So you just sit in the alliance. You literally don't have to make any purchases and then you just reap the rewards from other people. Now, if you're a whale, don't think that if you join an alliance, then your rewards are gonna be lessened because they're not. Literally, you make your purchase, you get all your loot cakes returned in full, and then other members of your alliance share the benefits from your purchase that you've made. Now, basically what loot cakes does and how they work with this system is they're taking the purchase data that you've made in your games and they're using that for market research about the purchasing behavior in different mobile games. So your information is safe. This has been signed up for by many, many other people. I'll look at my history here and you'll see that every time I make a purchase, I'm getting loot cakes harvested, 1400 loot cakes harvested, 2300. Now I have a pretty long history I've used loot cakes actually ever for for several months now. I've used loot cakes. You can even see a few purchases that have been made from alliance members of mine, Deadlights, which was an alliance that I was part of. If you want to join my alliance, it is called the uh, just Rock Pile, R A U K P I L E. So just go to Alliance Home, search for Rock Pile, and join or create alliance. Search for Rock Pile and join the alliance. There's literally no requirements to join. You guys are going to benefit from my purchases and I will benefit from your purchases if you decide to make any purchase. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Loot Cakes is going to be offering a $25 gift card giveaway to one random person who signs up using the link down below. So don't wait. Go ahead, click the link down below, sign up for Loot Cakes, start earning free rewards for your purchases and free to play games like Raid Shadow Legends, AFK Arena, whatever else it may be, purchases you make on the iOS store, the Android store, or even Steam, okay? All these points are gonna be converted to Loot Cakes, and let's take a look at the gift card you can redeem with your Loot Cakes, okay? So this is the one I redeemed not too long ago. It's called Reward Link Preferred. Now, when you do this one, this is pretty cool, okay? So I had done, I think, 500,000, maybe even 700,000 Loot Cakes, but I did $10, I just wanted to test it out to see how quick and easy it was. And then once I got this gift card, it basically took me to a website that had so many different options for gift cards, okay? I could literally choose to go out to a restaurant, okay? So maybe you have a significant other that you don't love telling about your purchases on games. Well, hey, now you can start purchasing gift cards for them to take them out to dinner, take them out to a nice meal, and then they're gonna encourage you to make more pack purchases in games like Raid, because they have some pretty good deals out every now and then, not encouraging spending, because like I said, you can get benefits like this free to play as well. Don't forget to check out lootcakes.com. There's gonna be a link down below with my referral link. Click that. 
be entered to win the giveaway if you're a U.S. resident. And if you have a Gmail account, you're good to go. Sign up, check it out. Awesome, awesome program to be in. Thank you all, and let's get back to the video. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump in here and talk about Cybelle. So Cybelle, um, hopefully it's saying her name right, is a champion who was in a fusion recently. Hopefully you guys did get her. I got lucky enough. I didn't think I was very lucky to actually pull her from a shard. So honestly, after testing her, I do like her. I think she's a solid champion. I think she's interesting. It took me a little while to figure out what I liked best as far as her build it wasn't just right out in the open super obvious but i think i've settled on one that i'm a pretty big fan of okay so i wanted to share this with you guys i said i was going to do this as soon as i booked her during cvc okay so she is fully booked to be honest if it lands on this a1 ability it's not a bad thing to book whatsoever depending on how conscientious of your books you are this a2 and a3 are definitely the most worth it but if it lands on this a1 this is actually a good ability to book because it increases this 25% chance of placing 30% decrease speed up to a 50% chance of placing 30% decrease speed. So a very, very solid A1 ability, to be honest, okay? So I do like this, which is why in her build, I've actually included accuracy on the chest plate and accuracy on the banner. Part of the reason why I've done that, and it's going to be talking about the champion build part of this, is... I wasn't worried about her being super tanky. Now, some of you are going to look at this and think that she is super tanky being at these stats. But to be honest, in my arena team, she's definitely not the most tanky champion, okay? So my other champions should be able to survive better than she does. Granted, she is force affinity. So against the magic affinity nukers, she does a pretty good job of surviving. I don't really want her to survive a very long time. But I also don't want her to die super quick either, right? Like, I want her to take a few hits. I want the enemy to actually have to play around it okay so i, I want to balance her between dying super quick and actually surviving as far as arena goes now as far as dungeon content goes i think her taking a lot of damage is very very solid because she has a lot of stuff in her kit that keeps her alive revives her own death and heals blocks damage increased speed so her kit synergizes in my opinion best with guardian i've tried shield set i've tried a high damage set which didn't work very well at all um, I've tried a high resistance set, which I didn't really like. So my favorite so far has been Guardian, allowing her to take as much damage as possible. Accuracy being a, at a respectable number, 262. This allows her to land that decreased speed, which is incredible for the arena, okay? If I can get lucky enough to do that decreased speed, which I'm going to talk about kind of my arena defense later on, and how she synergizes so well with a specific champion, and how this ability especially works so well. But overall, this build is one that I've become a huge fan of. Now, as far as like stat priority, I would focus on getting her HP and defense at a good number. I would make sure she's the fastest on your team, or at least close to the fastest. Now, if you have like a speed booster, you can definitely make them faster. But if you can keep her to be the fastest on your team, you can essentially keep up revival and death and increase defense almost the whole time. Okay, it'll basically stay on your team the entire time, which is absolutely huge. All right. So if she dies, she's going to be healing somebody on your team, healing the lowest HP ally fully. And when she's res by the Revival and Death, she's going to heal all allies by 20% of their max HP and fill her turn meter by 15%. So having the Revival and Death up as much as possible is very, very good. So I like making her fast. I like making her relatively tanky. And then I like having enough accuracy to actually apply that A1 decrease speed. It's incredible in PvE content as well. Now, I want to go over her masteries. Now, her mastery build, I'm still tweaking this. I'm just going to be fine-tuned over time. But so far, this is what I'm liking. There's a few things that I may change down the road. And those are, I may move Selfless Defender and actually give that to Ursuga. But currently, Ursuga doesn't have it. Because Selfless Defender and Bulwark, neither one of them stack with each other. So if one champion has it, the champion furthest in priority in the arena is going to be the one who gets the benefit of Bulwark or Selfless Defender. But I may remove this and maybe give her Retribution or possibly even Deterrence as well, depending on how many Kaimars I'm going against, all right? So both those abilities are going to allow her to counterattack with her A1 ability, which is going to, I assume, boost the turn meter. But it's also, and possibly more importantly, going to have a chance of placing decreased speed on the enemy, which, if I get that decreased speed off, that's going to help mess up the enemy attacking me in arena so, so much, okay? Assuming they don't have immunity, but we're going to pretend they don't, all right? So Retribution and Deterrence are both very, very solid masteries. Lasting Gifts works good on a lot of, a lot of her buffs. Granted, it doesn't work on Revival and Death, but it can extend the increased defense, the continuous heals, as well as the increased speed, which are all very good. This Rapid Response, very, very good too, because she's going to be constantly going through her buffs they're probably going to be falling off your allies and getting that turn meter boost is going to allow her to cycle through even faster okay so this mastery build i'm liking it so far i've been enjoying playing with it i may make the changes down there but that's going to just depend on your team setup overall this is a solid mastery build i wouldn't really put her in offense maybe war master i maybe go offense but honestly 
I like this build. She's not really much of a damage dealer. Um, she can hit fairly hard, but like I mentioned, I put her in a damage dealing set before and I was not a huge fan whatsoever. So a recap on her skills, A1 decreased speed, A2 revival and death and increased defense, very low cooldown, three turn when fully booked, and then her A3 ability. Honestly, I don't want to read all this ability. This ability is kind of complicated. We'll look at it in the arena, or not the arena, sorry, the dungeons, right? I actually built a team that it's 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 going to be free to play friendly in the fact that there's rare champions and ninja, but I wanted to just showcase that she doesn't require a super crazy team. So I'm going to show all the stats of these champs. They're decent. I think they're mastered. So this is definitely not like a team that I'm trying to recommend. Hey, it shows that she's a, can basically carry people. No, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I just want to show with a team that's not carrying her that she does very well. Okay, now she has the increased speed aura in all battles. So she's very, very solid. Definitely can always have a use. Okay, if you need a speed aura for the arena, boom, slot her in. Works out very, very well there. Now her A3 ability, like I was mentioning, it's kind of weird because as you can see here, if she swaps, the person with the lowest HP, we'll see it again in just a minute, the person with the lowest HP is the person who gets the block damage, and the person with the highest HP after the swap is the person who gets the two continuous heals, I believe it is, and the, uh, the um, crap, I just went blank, two continuous heals as well as the increased speed. So let's go ahead and see who has low HP. Nobody has low HP. Maybe, maybe Kale has a hit. I don't know. But let's see. Let's see what happens here. So... Two, two continuous heals, increased speed, Kale got the block damage, all right? So that ability overall for the arena and for the content in general is very good if you're doing it yourself, okay? Because she could be full HP, maybe you have Sylla the Drakes in your team and you want to swap that. Well, then all of a sudden you can say, okay, well, Sylla the Drakes is very low. Pretend Kale is Sylla the, Drake, Sylla the Drakes. So Sylla is very low. We go ahead and swap this. Now, boom, Sylla is the highest HP. And Cybelle has those, those continuous heals, plus she has the block damage. Now, I don't know why when she did that. I guess she always gives herself continuous heal. I didn't think that was the case, but apparently that is the case because she's not giving the continuous heals to the other person for whatever reason. Now, this ability is very odd. Let's see. Increase speed. Um, if this champion's HP is lower than the targets after the swap, fills this turn meter about 40%, places 30% increased speed buff on them for two turns, and places block... Um, damage buff on this champion for one turn also places two 15% continuous heal buffs on this champion for one turn So I guess she always just gets the continuous heal buffs on herself That was my mistake But the champion with the lowest HP is the champion going to be getting the block damage now Like I was saying in the arena that ability Works out kind of weird to be honest and you're gonna see that in the PvP video that I have in a little while That I've I actually turned it off for a while Okay, and I'm still debating on which one I want to do whether I want to keep it on and risk it having bad RNG or turn it off because she'll swap with champions when she definitely shouldn't because I don't really want her to have block damage. I would rather the other champion have block damage on them because if she dies, she fully heals them. So it's perfect. But if she can't get hit, she's not going to die, right? Like if she can't take any damage, she's not going to die. So I really like it when she does the swap well. But you got to be mindful. If you're playing it on manual, it may be a very good ability. But if you're doing it on auto, beware that she may swap it at a bad time and basically destroy your whole team. Because it's not, it's smart as far as I'm pretty sure, as far as what I've noticed, making the biggest HP swap. But it doesn't seem very smart as in making the best HP swap. Okay. So, like in cases where Ninja gets swapped, I may not want him to be swapped. I may want. My support champion to be swapped but instead she saves my dps champion and my support dies but on manual that could work very very well now we're going through here you can see everybody has revival and death everybody has increased defense hopefully hoarding kills ninja which he's stunned um, because of bulwark but you can see we have good cc from ninja um if somebody was to die cybel is gonna yeah, no problem revival and death everybody has it on basically she cycles it through very well everybody has it down for one turn right there but that that um Continuous heal buff being on Cybelle, since she's built with high HP anyways, works out very, very well. Because once she gets her turn back, if she was low HP, she's going to get topped off without too much of a tr struggle anyways. Okay, now hopefully against the dragon, we can see some people dying. I think we've only had revival and death proc a few times here. But ultimately, if you're a player who's like early game, mid game, I think Cybelle is going to be very solid in the Dragon's Lair especially. Very solid in Ice Golem for sure because the Ice Golem has those big slams, the RNGs involved, and you can definitely be saved by Revival and Death 
especially since Cybele keeps it up so frequently. I think she's going to be very good in the new Doom Tower bosses, especially the bomb boss. Um, but we'll see when that comes out how she's actually going to work. I know he has some synergies with uh, removing buffs, so we'll have to time that out. I'm going to test her out in there for sure. But definitely, I think she's going to have some synergies. Now, watch Kale. Kale, and eh, not Bellower, but definitely Kale. He'll, he should die here, right, with a poison proc on him or get super close. Let's see. No, he actually didn't die. <laughs> it was close. The dragon should kill him here. Let's watch Revival on Death. She's keeping it up basically the entire time. So like I was saying, if you're an early game player, mid game player, and you're needing her, well, if you're needing support in dungeon stages, I think Cybele is a very solid champion to build very fast. Basically build her like an apothecary where you want to be very fast, keeping her buffs up, keeping everything flowing. And she's going to do very good about being like that kind of fail safe for your team. You see Kale went down there. Granted, He's not going to be able to do that another turn. It's going to take a little while before she gets that revival and death back up on everybody. But she's kind of there as a fail safe, right? She's a fail safe plus a decreased speed on the enemy and just overall a very solid support champion. So I think she's going to be very good for a lot of players. If you're looking for a champion like this, I do think she's worth investing the books into, which I was going to talk about that later on. But the books give her such a big impact. The, the Cybele you see without books versus the Cybele you see with books are completely different Mother Cybels, all right? So definitely a champion worth investing in if you need that type of support when you're running this content, okay? Now this team right here, um, it's kind of difficult to test my defense, to be honest, the defense that I've been using, because Cybele does the Revival and Death, but to be honest, it doesn't really do her justice because the other champions on my team are pretty good. Like, Godseeker really shines in this team, and I may even make a guide on her and talk about her some more, but let's see what this works, okay? Now, I do have her in the back because I noticed some weird things, like when she was in the front, she would die, and she wouldn't heal anybody. It was kind of odd, so I like her in the back. Um, I'm still testing out where I like her the most, but so far, being in the back, having that Guardian set back there works out very well. Plus, if Kaimar sleeps, I've noticed that whatever happens, she gets her sleep broken, okay? So what Kaimar does, I guess he sleeps, she takes it, absorbs some of the damage, and then boom, she wakes it from the sleep, which is awesome. Godseeker is so, so good. Reses with some turn meter, I believe, plus resets abilities. We're going to go ahead and use the A2 here. On auto, she uses A3, which is kind of weird. Let's hope that Herndig actually kills me. I'm not going to use her A3. It makes me too tanky. But if Herndig kills me, it doesn't really matter. Because now everybody has revival and death, increased defense, no problem whatsoever. So if Duchess dies here, it's just going to be a much longer match for sure. Now... This does go back to the same situation where Cybele is not really dying, okay? She swapped HP with Duchess. She has block damage, but we don't want her to have block damage, right? So it's kind of weird having that A3 ability. Honestly, I may just turn that off because I don't really like the way it works. I would have rather her use the A1 there, place decreased speed on everybody, because as I mentioned before, Godseeker synergizes very, very well with Mother Cybele because Godseeker has A2 ability. If you build her with accuracy, she strips some of the buffs from the enemy, opening them up with no immunity, essentially, allowing Cybele to place that A1 decreased speed. So Mother Cybele and Godseeker, I think, are such a good combo to use together. So we have decreased speed on Kaimar, which is going to throw off their team without a doubt. Mother Cybele, you'll see it here and in the video I'm about to show you, she is super tanky. All right. Like she is very annoying. She survives by herself for a very long time. And her Suga being added onto that mess makes it even more annoying. Granted, that could be because Magic Affinity Champion, he is a hard hitting champion, though. But let's open up this video that Shiny recorded to me. So thank you, Shiny, for doing this. He recorded it during my stream, which is luckily the only video that I have. Well, not luckily. Unfortunately, this is the only video that I have, but I'm glad that I do have it. So he found me in the arena. Same team. Luckily, this is actually a situation where he's actually picking and choosing what's going on. Okay. Unfortunately, testing my defense, using it on offense doesn't work out great. But this is a good example of how everything works. If I can keep it open. All right, so you'll see the Trunda, she'll, she'll hit pretty hard now. To be honest, Mother Side Bell here doesn't really give you showcase a ton because she gets fear activated on her a few times. She doesn't die super quickly, but there are a few times where she does some pretty good work, okay? No decreased speed because everybody has immunity, immunity there, no immunity on Yoshi. But here, right there, you can see that Mother Side Bell actually fully healed Godseeker. So granted, Godseeker did proc Swift Parry, which synergizes so well with Mother Cybele, and Duchess rezzed earlier, another reason why Godseeker is amazing. Once you get that full heal by Mother Cybele, watch this. So Godseeker 
is going to res Duchess, reset all of her cooldowns, and then Duchess is going to be able to instantly watch Duchess's HP though. Okay, so Duchess is going to res everyone, and then with the Mother's Side Bell being resed, she's going to proc her passive again and give everybody a 20% HP heal. So Duchess's res, I believe, gives everybody a 70%, uh, revives them to 70% HP. Mother's Side Bell gives everybody that extra 20%. So basically, Duchess was res by Godseeker, reset cooldowns, Duchess res everybody. 70% HP, and Mother's Side Bell boosted them another 20%. Now, this is the part that's kind of weird. So you see right there, Mother's Side Bell swapped HP with Godseeker. There's no reason she should have done that. Honestly, there, she should have just used her A1. And I would have used her A1 had I been controlling her, but I wasn't controlling her. And so this is what has to happen, unfortunately. But when she does that, she gets blocked damage on herself. The continuous heal is great, but now Godseeker is left wide out in the open, right? And Mother's Side Bell is not taking any damage. I would rather the block damage have been on Godseeker and Mother's Side Bell been taking the damage or just not even use that ability because now he can easily kill Godseeker and Neri. And that's going to open up Mother's Side Bell to having just Finn by herself. It's not going to be that great. Okay, now Godseeker rezzed herself, makes his team kind of annoying, ends up being like a two minute match. And here, Mother Side Bell, once again, is being very, very tanky, surviving quite a while. It lasts till a two-minute mark. She places Revival and Death on herself. I think he ends up killing her, and then she reses, her, <laughs> reses herself, which is actually kind of funny. But she's just an annoying champion to go against in the arena. And I definitely think she's going to be slotted into some pretty good stall teams. Granted, this team has no win condition that I'm using on defense. But its win condition, I guess, would be the person attacking you deciding it's not worth their time and leave him. So I actually have this defense up currently, and we're getting a pretty good amount of wins on defense, right? So boom, 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 three wins there. These player powers, 7.2, 4.8. So not crazy high on the 4.8. Um, 6 million player power there, 5.8 there, 5.8 there. Now my defense, I do have a few things changed. I have her using this A1, this A2 ability first, A3 ability second. I want to make sure she doesn't swap in the very beginning and then just mess things up. So I do have some things changed. I am going to work on figuring out whether I really like this ability or not. So far, I think it's better on manual, on auto. I think it's just a little bit finicky, and it's not amazing. So ultimately, I think Mother Side Bell is a solid champion. I think she's going to have a lot of PvE uses. Her uses in PvP are a lot more niche and situational, to be honest. Like, fitting her in this team is very specific. I think she could be fun. Now, I did see somebody post on Reddit using her in like a typical nuke team, but using Side Bell as the speed aura which is a very legit use for her especially if you're a newer player if you're a newer player thor is an aura and she's gonna be the highest speed aura compared to a lot of champions especially earlier on in the game so if you did this fusion it'd be very solid 24 percent is a very good speed aura especially being in all battles so you can always get a use from her there very good support champion per champion for pve content allowing a fail safe essentially for your runs decrease speed on the enemy very solid there if you have the books to go for it I think you'll notice a night and day. Well, I don't even think that. I know it for sure. You'll literally notice a night and day difference between a fully booked side bell versus a not booked side bell. Not booked side bell wasn't that good. Maybe for faction wars, you can use her A1 ability. If you're only wanting to use her A1 ability, she's fine. But if you want to use her A2 and her A3, it takes so long to cycle back around to them that you'd have to build her very, very differently. And you don't get as much flexibility with your build if you don't have her fully booked. So having her fully booked is definitely worth it, especially if you can get these two fully booked. The A1, I think, is honestly worth the books. But overall, I do like Mother's Side Bell. This is my summary of Mother's Side Bell. Hopefully, you guys like her when you test her out. Let me know what you think about the champion. Um, I do think she's a solid champion. I think she's going to be even better with the new Dune Tower rotation. Um, but yeah, definitely let me know what you guys think. I'm going to claim my regular pack here. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will catch you all in the next video.